chapter 7, continuing our study in the Gospel of John. And we want to read the entire 7th chapter, all 53 verses of it. But before we do, we want to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, we know that your word describes the way of salvation is the narrow way that few find, not the broad, easy way that leads to destruction. <clears throat> and Lord, sometimes life is not di difficult in our Christian life, and there are blessings, and mountaintop experiences. And Lord, if we stay in the word, and we stay in prayer, and we stay close to you, then perhaps we... Uh, limit some of the opportunities of Satan to attack us because he knows that we're most vulnerable when we're by ourselves and thinking of our thoughts and trying to do our will. So Lord, keep us close to you, we pray. But we know and recognize that in this world of darkness that men react to the light. They do not want the light and unbelief is always opposite of truth and there will always be opposition and persecution and problems because of the world and the flesh and the devil. And so may we not uh, be unprepared. May we not be unsuspecting. But Lord, may we realize that we need you every day of our life because we can't handle life and its problems. We can't defeat our enemies and our own strength. We don't know your will and we can't discern the opportunities that are ahead of us. We can't evaluate situations properly and so we need to pray and search your word to find the truth and we pray that we may. Guide us today as we try to do that in John 7. We pray that we may see Jesus as he lives and speaks the truth and see where the attacks of opposition come from against him and that we may realize that similar things may happen to us. May we see him use the truth in the scripture to deal with that as unbelief and may we do so also. Lord, help us today, we pray. And we ask it and depend on it and rejoice that you are ready and willing to do it. In the name of our Lord Jesus who loved us and gave himself for us. Who died in our place and bore our sin in his own body on the tree. In his name we ask these things. Amen. And after these things Jesus walked in Galilee. For he would not walk in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacle was at hand. And his brethren, that is his brothers, his family, therefore said unto him, Depart from here and go up into Judea that thy disciples may also see the works which thou doest. For there shall no... There is no man that doeth anything in secret, but he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. And then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is already, always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hateth me, because I testify of it that its works are evil, Go ye up to this feast. I go not up to this feast, for my time is not fully come. And when he said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went, went he also up to the feast, not openly, but in secret. And then the Jews sought him and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some say, he is a good man. Others say, nay, but he deceiveth the people. 
However, no man spoke openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but him that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keep the law? Why go you about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast a demon who goeth about to kill thee. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receive circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry with me because I have made a man entirely well on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he who they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? Nevertheless, we know this man from where he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth from where he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, You both know me, and you know from where I am, and I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. And they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than this man hath done? And the Pharisees heard the people murmur such things concerning him. And the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. And then Jesus said unto him, them, yet yeah, a little while I am with you, and then I must go to him that sent me. You seek me, and you shall not find me, and where I am you cannot come. And then said the Jews among themselves, Where will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go into the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the, the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this that he said, Ye seek me, and ye shall not find me, and where I am there ye cannot come. And in the last day of the great feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. But he spoke this of the Holy Spirit, that they who believe on him should receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And many of the people, therefore, when they heard this say, said of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh from the seed of David out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? So there, there was a division because of him. And some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. And then came the officers of the chief priest and the Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have you not brought him? And the officers answered, Never man spake like this man. And then the Pharisees answered and said, Are you also deceived? Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed on him? But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. And Nicodemus, who by the way was a Pharisee and had believed on him, said unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, doth our law judge any man before it hear him and know what he doeth? And they answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went to his own house. There are two kinds of people in this world. There are those that are saved and those that are not. And there are two kinds of attitude in this world. 
both in the saved and the, well, one attitude is in the unsaved alone, but in the saved there may be two attitudes. There are two kinds of attitude in the world, and one is belief and faith, and the other is unbelief. And most of the opposition in this chapter came from the unbelievers. And sometimes the unbelievers are with the believers in church. But most of the time, when opposition against the word occurs, it occurs because of unbelief. Because of the not knowing or not wanting to know or refusing to understand or being convicted by sin or wanting your own way. Some reason we do not know or want to know what the scripture really says and therefore we oppose the truth. And truth is always opposed by unbelief. Unbelief cannot receive the truth. It is the opposite from the truth. It cannot uh, understand the truth. It cannot know the truth. It does not want the truth. It is not of the truth. And today we see Jesus encounter opposition. And we ask, where does it come from? Now in the multitude, there were those that said, this is the Christ. There were those that believed on Him. There were those that recognized who He was because of what He did and what He said. There was the words of the soldiers even. Well, we can't arrest Him. This man has a power and truth that nobody else has. And yet, we see opposition come and unbelief everywhere around him. And where did the opposition and the unbelief come from? In 1 through 9, it came from his family. And sometimes it will come from your family. Not always. But sometimes it will for his brethren anyway. We don't know about his sisters, but we know about his brothers here and his family. Maybe Mary. Maybe Mary knew who he was and believed who he was, his mother. But we know about the brothers, his siblings, his brothers and, and probably his sisters. They did not believe that he was the Christ. They did not believe it. And verse 4, uh, verse 5 tells us that, that they didn't believe him yet. Now they did later after the cross and we have the record of their life. But before the cross, they did not believe him. And so they said to him, the Jews are trying to kill you. And he knew that. And they said, but listen, you can't. He said, listen. They said, go and, and show them what you can do, big brother. And, and they said it in kind of a scornful, mocking way. Show you disciples who you are and what you can do. And they didn't care about his safety. And they didn't care about God's will. They were kind of mocking. They were jealous, perhaps, of the Son of God their older brother. They were perhaps certainly in unbelief because they didn't believe him and the advice that they gave him was not uh, the advice of God's will for that particular day and moment. Though he did go down later secretly and spoke when God told him to speak. But they were interested in a TV campaign and a public relations thing and they were interested in seeing what this one could really do but they didn't believe on him. They didn't know who he was. They didn't believe he was God and from God, doing the work of God. They didn't believe. And so opposition came from his family in verse 1 through 9. Opposition came from the unbelieving multitude in 10 through 31. And, and we see them here in verse 12. Some said he's a good man and others said he's a deceiving the people. He's deceiving the people. And some said uh, in, uh, that he's a blasphemer. Uh, they said in verse 20, he had the demon. Uh, he's working the works of the devil. And some says he claims to be God and he's a blasphemer. Look at verse 19, what Jesus said to them. And it's interesting to note here, any of you that think that you can keep God's holy standards and be saved. Read what verse 19 says from the lips of God Himself. Did not Moses give you the law and yet none of you keepeth the law? And why do you go about killing me? None of them were without sin. 
None of them could keep the written standard of the Mosaic law. And that's why you had to have sacrifices for everything in the world. You had to shed a lamb for this and that and the other. It had to be the yearly sacrifice of the nation because the law was supposed to teach Israel that they were sinful and they needed the salvation their Messiah would come and provide. And yet these people were beginning to think that they kept the law and here was one who claimed to be God and they said, you're a blasphemer and we follow Moses. We don't know where you're from. You're not God, though he claimed to be God and he did the works of God. It was their unbelief. And then in 26 and 27, we see the, the ones that are confused. And, and in 27, they say, Nevertheless, we know this man. We know he was born in Nazareth. We know that when Christ cometh, no man knoweth. And, and you see, that's what Christ warns about false Christ. Because at the institution of the kingdom things will happen suddenly in the millennium age Jesus will come back to heaven and only he will be able to straighten out things that were right they were under the oppression of Rome and, and, and they said that Christ is going to appear suddenly in the temple and you see they just understood maybe a part of the truth they didn't have the whole truth and some of the rest of them were saying well you know uh, Christ is going to be born of David. He's going to be David's son. He's going to be born in Bethlehem. But this guy's from Nazareth. That's right. They understood part of the truth. They just didn't know that Jesus was down in Bethlehem when he was born. And he fulfilled the prophecy of Micah. And he was the Messiah of the Old Testament. They just had part of the truth. And having part of the truth, they rejected all of the truth. They were confused. And so from the unbelieving multitude, we have all kind of reasons and all kind of attitudes and all kind of unbelief. But the end result was they were trusting in what they could think and figure out and what they wanted to believe. And they were believing that instead of the evidence that God had given them in the person of His Son living right in their midst, doing miracles and teaching them. And then we see that opposition came from the religious leaders in 32 through 53. I tell you that if a man and a system and a world and a country forgets God's word and goes from it, its leaders will lead them astray and the Bible tells us that. And God give us leaders that love Him. Because if we don't love Him, and if we keep turning as we have been these 50 and 60 and 70 years from the blessed revival period that God has given us in the truth of this word, we are going to be cast into destruction and oblivion and unbelief. And our leaders are going to lead us that way. And this was the condition in the nation of Israel so that in 32, when the Pharisees heard people believing on him and, and saying he's the Christ, they sent officers to, to arrest him. Now they couldn't. And, and all through this chapter, they tried to get a hold of him and arrest him and kill him, but they couldn't because it wasn't the right time yet. And they couldn't do it, but they sought to. And they tried to. And we see the mistaken in 44 who, who said he's supposed to be born in Bethlehem, but he came from Nazareth. And so we, we see the mistaken. And then we see the scribes and the Pharisees in 49 who said, listen, we're the rulers of the law. We understand the truth. We decide what is true and not. This people, they're cursed. They don't know anything. And when rulers feel that way about the interest of their people, that they know what's best for everybody, look out, brother. And that's about where we're at. And they didn't. But there was one there, Nicodemus, who believed and knew that this was the Christ. And, and his words are words of wisdom and sanity that do we judge somebody before we listen to him and find out the truth about him and have a proper examination of him? And they all scattered and went to their own house. The rulers hated him. And, and isn't it amazing how many miracles Jesus did on the Sabbath? I think he just kept doing them on the Sabbath because he was determined to teach them 
that their own traditions and their own hypocrisies and their own rules were against the rules and the righteousness of God. And he was God and he knew what was right and wrong and good was right and their ideas were wrong. And they hated him and they opposed him. Friend, Do not be surprised if there is opposition against you when you try to do what is true and right according to the Word of God. Don't be discouraged by that. Don't be deterred by that. Don't be defeated by that. And I think of that day, I believe it was in King Hezekiah's day, when the armies of the enemy came and surrounded Jerusalem and he said, it's the day of battle, but is there any strength in our generation and our people to, to bring faith and deliverance? Is there any power to save? Is there any strength in our people to trust God in a time like this? I tell you, we need people that can trust God through thick and thin. That can go through the fires of torment like our forefathers. Listen, we're called Baptists. I'm a Baptist, and I, that's not in deference to other groups. I realize that God has saved in a lot of different denominations, and I'm a Baptist because Baptists have historically said this book is their rule of faith and practice, and although they don't go by it, all of them like that, that's how our, our group was founded on the principle of letting this book be the only authority of faith and practice. And it is. And the historic Baptist position is close to what the New Testament teaches a believer ought to be. And I tell you that our historic Baptist forefathers were burned at the stake because they would not go along with error. They would not say, all right, I'm going to be tolerant. I'm not going to be critical. I'm not going to be strict and stern. I'm not going to insist on truth. I'm, we're going to have a group and a cooperative effort here. Everybody's going to get along. And I believe in getting along with people. And I believe in loving people. And I believe if you can't help somebody, it's better to just keep quiet than to argue foolishly with them. And we certainly shouldn't attack people even if they're wrong. We ought to try to help them. But I tell you, I'm not for peace at any price. And I'm not for walking by any other standard but this book. And neither was Jesus and neither is God the Father or the Spirit. God has exalted this truth, this book above His name. It is the record of the account that He wants us to know. And if we live by anything else, we are fools. And we will reap the action of unbelief. And we will see failure in our life instead of God's will. God, give us Christians that are not bitter and hateful and mean, but Christians who love the Lord Jesus Christ and are willing to go by His Word, who know it and understand it and are taught of God, who will stick by the truth in hard times. And friend, hard times are coming. Hard times are here already, and harder times are coming. And what kind of Christians will you and I be in this world of unbelief and sin? I hope we'll be the kind of Christian that believes and not the kind of Christian that opposes the truth. Two kinds of people in the world, saved and unsaved. Two kinds of attitude in any group and any people. Faith and unbelief in which is characteristic of you and of me. God help us by His grace, I pray. Amen.